In lesson 9.1, you will apply the distance and midpoint formulas. To find the distance between two points, we apply the Pythagorean theorem to a right triangle. So on the coordinate plane, we can graph any two points, x sub 1, y sub 1, and x sub 2, y sub 2. And we want the distance between those two points, so we'll label that distance d. To find it, we create a right triangle by drawing a horizontal line through one of the points and a vertical line through the other creating this right triangle. And the ordered pair that names the vertex of this right triangle at the right angle would be, we'd go over x sub 2, and we'd go down y sub 1. Okay, so now the distance, the length of this um, horizontal leg of this right triangle can be found by taking a difference in x coordinates. x sub 2 take away x sub 1 and the length of the vertical leg of this right triangle can be found by taking a difference in the y coordinates, y sub 2, take away y sub 1. Okay, and now using the Pythagorean theorem, that hypotenuse squared is equal to the sum of the legs squared. Well, one leg has a length of x sub 2, take away x sub 1, and the other leg has a length of y sub 2, take away y sub 1. Okay, so this is our Pythagorean theorem, and to get just d, we'd want to undo that power by taking the square root of both sides. So we'd get just d, and it would be equal to two solutions, plus or minus, but because it, we're talking about distance, the negative value that we're getting would not be uh, accurate. So we'll just go with the positive value that we'll get when we take the square root of d squared. And so what we get is our distance formula. The distance between any two points is d equals the square root of difference in x coordinates squared plus the difference in y coordinates squared. Now let's use that distance formula to find the distance between 2, negative 4 and negative 5, negative 1. So all we have to do is substitute in those values into our distance formula. We need a difference in x coordinates, so let's take negative 5 subtract 2 squared plus difference in y coordinates, negative 1 subtract a negative 4 squared, okay, and simplify. So negative 5 minus 2, that's negative 7 squared, and negative 1 double negatives, that's plus 4, is 3, and so we have 3 squared. So we have the square root of 49 plus 9, or the distance is equal to the square root of 58. And now since the only factors of 58 are 2 times 29, and neither of those are perfect squares, this is our final answer. It's in simplest form. Okay, here we want to classify the triangle with vertices given uh, as scalene, isosceles, or equilateral by finding the lengths of all the sides of this triangle. So let's just draw a triangle and label it with these vertices, 2, negative 1, 4, 2, and 5, 0. So that we're finding distances, let's label them d sub 1, d sub 2, and d sub 3. Now to find those distances, we can use our distance formula. So we're going to take a difference in x coordinates to find d sub 1. 4 take away 2 squared, and difference in y coordinates of those endpoints. 2 take away a negative 1. Okay, and simplifying. I'm getting the square root of 4 take away 2, that's 2, and 2 squared is 4. 2 double negatives again, so 2 plus 1, that's 3, and 3 squared is 9. So I'm getting a distance of the square root of 13 for that first side of this triangle. And now d sub 2, using the distance formula and taking the difference in x coordinates, I have 5 take away 4, 
squared plus 0 take away 2 squared and simplifying. 5 take away 4 is 1 and 1 squared is 1. 0 take away 2 is negative 2 and negative 2 squared is 4. So I'm getting a distance of the square root of 5 units. For d sub 2, we have d sub 3 or the third side of this triangle to find the length of. So using the distance formula one more time, I have 5 take away 2 as a difference in x coordinates. And I have 0 take away a negative 1 as a difference in y coordinates. And simplifying, 5 take away 2 is 3 and 3 squared is 9. And 0 double negative, 0 plus 1 is 1, 1 squared is 1. So I'm getting a distance of the square root of 10 units for that third side. Now you can see that all three sides have different lengths, so that's going to make this a scalene triangle. A scalene triangle has three sides that are all different in length, while an isosceles triangle, if you remember from geometry, has two sides that are equal in length, and an equilateral triangle has all three sides equal in length. In example 3, we want to find the midpoint of the segment joining these two points. Now to find the midpoint, we just have to use the formula that's given here. And this formula too can be easily derived just like the uh, distance formula can be uh, found. The midpoint between these two points, 6, negative 2, and 2, negative 9, is located halfway between those points. So we'll note that with these hash marks that this midpoint is dividing uh, this line segment into two equal pieces. And now we'll find that midpoint by taking an average of the x coordinates, so 6 plus 2 divided by 2, and an average of the y coordinates of the endpoints of this segment. Simplifying, 6 plus 2 is 8, and 8 divided by 2 is 4. Negative 2 minus 9 is negative 11, so we get a negative 11 halves for a y coordinate of this midpoint. In example 4, we want to write an equation of the perpendicular bisector of the line segment joining these two points. So let's look at that line segment joining negative 2, 1, and 1, 4. Okay, perpendicular bisector would be, would travel through that line, that line segment, dividing it into two equal pieces again, and being perpendicular to it. So if we're going to write the equation of that line, we know that we can write the equation in y equals mx plus b form, but if we're going to find a, a point and a slope for that line, we might start by writing the equation in y, take away y sub 1 is equal to the slope times x take away x sub 1 form, and then solving for y to leave it in that useful form, slope-intercept form. Okay, so to write the equation of the line, like I said, we need a point and a slope. Well, we can find the midpoint of that line segment that's given, and that's going to be a point on our line that we're going to write the equation of. So to find that midpoint, we'll take an average of the x coordinates again. So negative 2 plus 1 divided by 2, and an average of the y coordinates, so 1 plus 4 divided by 2. Okay, so this midpoint is going to be negative 1 half and positive 5 halves when we simplify. Okay, besides a point, we need a slope. Well, we know that perpendicular lines have slopes that are opposite reciprocals. So if we use our slope formula, which is the difference in y coordinates over the difference in x coordinates, we can find the slope of the line segment that we're working with. And all we have to do is take the opposite reciprocal of that to get the slope of the line that's perpendicular to it. So finding this slope, I'm going to take a difference in y coordinates, 4 take away 1, over a difference in x coordinates, 1 take away a negative 2. So it looks like I'm getting positive 3 over 
positive 3 or 1. Now the opposite reciprocal of 1 is negative 1. So we'll use the slope and the point that we just found to write the equation of this line. We'll substitute in 5 halves for y sub 1 into our point slope formula. Negative 1 in for m and x take away a negative 1 half. Okay, and now to get this equation in a more useful form, slope-intercept form, we're going to add that 5 halves to both sides. We're going to distribute on the right, so negative 1 times x is going to give us negative x, and negative 1, we're, we're going to have a positive 1 half inside parentheses here, so negative 1 times positive 1 half is negative 1 half, and we're adding 5 halves from the other side. And simplifying to get our y-intercept, for this perpendicular bisector, one, negative one half and positive five halves is four halves, which is two. So there's the equation of the perpendicular bisector of the line segment passing through those two points. In example five, we're given the distance between zero, one, and x. Given that the distance between these two points is square root of 34, we want to find the value of x. So we can use our distance formula here in order to solve for x. And let's just write that distance formula again. Difference in x coordinates and difference in y coordinates. Okay, so we're given a distance of the square root of 34. And we can substitute in the coordinates of the points that we're given. Difference in x coordinates. So I've got x take away 0 squared, and difference in y coordinates, 4 take away 1 squared. Okay, now I would want to get rid of the radicals in this equation, and I can do that by squaring both sides, because I'm going to solve this equation for x. So a radical times itself is what's inside. And I can start simplifying on the right-hand side here. I'm going to get x take away 0, which is just x squared. And I'm going to get three, uh, 4 take away 1, which is 3 squared, or 9. So now I can subtract 9 from both sides in order to get x squared alone. So I get x squared is equal to 34 take away 9, which is 25. And solving for x, I'll take the square root of both sides. Now this time, I'm going to need both solutions. x is equal to plus or minus the square root of 25, which is 5. So there are two points that are a distance of square root of 34 units from 0, 1. The first one is negative 5, 4, and another one would be positive 5, 4. They're on either sides of that point, 0, 1, but they're the same distance from the point, 0, 1. Include with your notes of this video guided practice problems 1, 2, and 4 on pages 615 and 616 of your textbook.